This week's video is sponsored by NordVPN. Check out the links in the description and hang around to the end of the video to hear a special offer for Infinitely Galactic viewers for a two year plan for one of the best VPN providers on the internet. What's going on internet? IG back again today. And it is always a good day in the open source world when Elementary brings out a new release. Now, for a bit of background, Elementary is one of those projects that only comes out with a new, uh, with a brand new release every couple of years to coincide with when Ubuntu releases their long-term support release. Now, they use Ubuntu as a core, as many of you would know, but the uh, elementary OS project has very interestingly uh, numbered this particular version, Elementary OS Juno 5.0, as opposed to 0.4.1, I believe, was the last release, which was Loki. Now, why that is significant is because the elementary developers and the team behind this project believe that this release is finally ready for prime time and they're ready to kind of remove a numbering moniker that would indicate that it is uh, less than ready or, or maybe incomplete in some way. And so in a lot of ways, Juno represents a lot of polish, a lot of uh, coherent design and a lot of tweaks to make what was already a pretty good uh, a pretty good stable project in Loki to, to bring it up a notch in quality and um, productivity and consistency. And so here we are with Juno. It's, it's one of my favorite projects to follow in the open source world. And I'm gonna do my best to not let that color too much of my opinion or, or review as we dive into this. So let's check it out, Elementary OS Juno. I will start with my biggest criticism up front here, and it's a bit of a backhanded criticism in that it's been uh, it's been you know a couple of years uh, since Loki originally debuted, and a lot of stuff has changed in the open source world since then. And yet here we are with a brand new release of Elementary OS, and it basically looks the same on the surface level, and I'm putting those in some big italics uh, as the last release. Now. The reason I say this as a criticism is because uh, the average Joe that maybe checked out this project a couple of years ago, uh, they're going to uh, boot it up and maybe look at it in a live environment or maybe install it on their PC and look around just in the first few seconds and go, well, I can't see anything that's changed. It's the same beast, isn't it? So I say this because it's very easy to judge a book by its cover. And on the surface, there aren't screaming headline features that, that somehow elevate elementary OS leaps and bounds ahead of, uh, of what they did with Loki. It's a continuation, it's an iteration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the, the iterative features that they've brought into Juno, and then I'm gonna try and give my opinion on those and then the subtotal at the end of this. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to the, what is available on the desktop, there are actually a few little tweaks here and there. Um, first of all, I wanna highlight the fact that keyboard navigation is something that they've actually taken uh, kind of seriously in this release, and they've given you different options to be able to customize what the meta key does. The meta key or command key, depending on what kind of hardware you're on, uh, you can choose what you wanna do, whether you wanna launch the applications menu or the shortcuts overlay. By default, you tap the meta key and you get this shortcut cheat sheet, which I think is very helpful for people wanting to learn how to be productive with their laptop or desktop. So I think this is a good move. Um, uh, for me personally, I'm used to having the applications menu on the meta key, but, uh, but you can very easily get used to the meta key in space, which is what it is on, on Mac OS, I'm pretty sure anyway. Okay, so keyboard navigation uh, has, uh, I think, definitely improved since Loki, and a lot of the shortcuts are a lot more, they make a lot more sense, uh, the way that they are mapped in terms of uh, navigating workspaces and uh, switching to um, full screen mode, switching to multitasking view, all of that kind of stuff. It's very very fluid, it's very um, intuitive. Now the other thing is that they've they've added uh, Nightlight, which is honestly, it's, you know, it is what it is. Pretty much everyone and their mum is adding uh, Nightlights to different desktop environments now. So you can access Nightlight through the, the control panel, which we're gonna touch on, or the settings, system settings. Probably one of my favorite features that I think many people are gonna gloss over is the picture-in-picture -picture mode. Now the way that this works, let's say for example, uh, I don't know, you're, let's say you're watching uh, something on YouTube. So with the new picture-in-picture -picture mode, what you can actually do is meta key and F, and then you simply get a space to select a certain amount of the screen that you wanna monitor. You select that, and now what's gonna happen is whenever you have an application over the top 
of the app that you just were using, uh, it'll actually open up this, uh, it'll keep this preview down here or wherever you wanna drag it while that window is being covered up which I think is actually very cool. So I think this is a great productivity boon and the cool thing is it doesn't really matter what it is. It's not limited to video specific content. Uh, it's not limited to local videos or a video app. It's just whatever is on the screen that you wanna keep an eye on, you can select that part of the screen and have it in picture in picture. They've neatened up a lot of the icons up here in the notification tray to make sure that they're all looking coherent. And also they've added a, a panel that is much more dynamic depending on the wallpaper that you have. So if you have a wallpaper that needs the higher contrast Trust, then it will give you a transparent do uh, a transparent panel while you are using the desktop and if you put an app into full screen then it will black it out um, and then the reverse happens if the wallpaper is particularly bright it'll change these elements to darker text so it's easier to see them so again it's very small things but when they all tie together it, it makes for a much more pleasant and uh, and well thought out experience it feels like every nook and cranny of this system has been put under a microscope and examined for is it achieving what it's meant to be doing? And I guess case in point for me in that particular point would be system settings. Now, it's very easy to gloss over system settings, but for me, the fact that each of these uh, custom or almost all of them are custom um, panels that are plugged into this system settings, and the fact that they have only the settings that you would actually want to get to is amazing because there are plenty of system settings out there, <coughs> KDE, uh, where there are way too many options and it becomes intimidating to a user, to a new user, and it just comes darn frustrating for a, an experienced user to get straight to what they're looking for. A lot of these settings plugins have been rewritten to be a lot more simple and a lot more succinct to what users actually want to change on this system. Case in point would be power. They've uh, changed this depending on what the hardware will support uh, in terms of whether you're on a desktop, laptop, so forth and so on. They've added a bunch more system sounds as well, which again kind of adds to that feeling of you using something that's very different, new and fresh because we've never heard these kind of alerts and notifications on another system before, so I like that. And a lot of work has gone into the back end of their style sheet, their toolkit, their iconography and their color palette to make it all feel connected. And that can be said for all of the apps that they have in the app center. And this is where I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here now. So elementary have really good guidelines for their developers about what makes a good elementary app, including things like the color palette and the toolkit that you're using, the programming language and all of that kind of thing. And they do a great job of looking after developers and giving them the tools to be able to make great apps for the ecosystem. And honestly, if I was gonna sum up the reason why you would want to use Elementary over any other Linux distribution out there, or even I could argue any other operating system out there, is because Elementary is not just working on a distribution, they're working on developing a vibrant open source ecosystem. And I think that is so easy to overlook because we have way too much choice in the open source world. But I think it's really important that these guys are not just focusing on the, the desktop environment and the tools that you're gonna use every day, but they're focusing on creating a platform where developers can create quality open source apps and give them to users uh, and actually get decently compensated for what their work is worth. Uh, now, all of these, um, now a lot of apps that are submitted to the App Store have this pay what you want model where uh, most of them say free, but if you do want to support a developer or if you want to tip them, uh, they have recommendations about what the developer thinks their app is worth. And if you wanna pay that, you can go right ahead or you can pay a custom amount of your choosing, including zero dollars if you can't afford it. They don't want to force you to pay for open source software. They simply wanna create a way that is very easy to compensate developers for their hard work. Now, the way that a coherent ecosystem plays out is very important, especially with modern hardware being what it is. Now, my case in point here is high pixel density displays. I have another machine that has a 3000 by 2000 screen resolution. And the fact that Elementary and all of the apps that Elementary supports uh, scale up really nicely and work really well on a high pixel density display 
Um, I really appreciate that. And the fact that everything looks coherent and consistent is nice as well. Obviously the rest of the software or the rest of the app center is very much the same, but the way it handles updates has been changed a little bit as well. We get a little bit more uh, detail in terms of what updates are landing with apps. And also another, another um, interesting tweak that they've done is that if you have downloaded an app which has a suggested uh, payment of let's say two dollars and uh, and you decided to pay nothing for that app when a feature update comes for that app you'll get a gentle reminder to maybe compensate that developer for their app uh, again so again you can choose to say no i don't want to pay anything for it and that's fine but it is uh, obviously security updates will come through as per normal no no gate there um, and there isn't really either a gate either it's more like a checkpoint just to say are you sure you don't want to support this developer for the work that they're doing and i think it's a it's a gentle tweak honestly i think we can all be grown-ups and allow elementary to continue to push this platform further for the open source developers and the quality of their apps for their sake, I think it's worth putting in a tweak like that. They've done a bunch of work on a lot of their first party apps and I'm not gonna get into all the details here, but literally basically all of their first party apps have been tweaked and changed in some way. Just rolling down their release notes, it talks about uh, the music player has streamlined new controls, Terminal has a few new color schemes you can use, uh, their first party uh, text editor code has undergone a lot of refinements and changes. It's got Git integration, still very lightweight on resources. One of the biggest features that I'm excited about for Epiphany is the fact that it has Firefox Sync now built in. So including the feature of being able to install websites as web apps, you now have the ability to sync up with Firefox to be able to sync in all your bookmarks, passwords, all that kind of thing. In conclusion, Elementary has a lot of stuff going on. They've, they've put a lot of hard work into this ecosystem over the last few years of development. And I think what they've landed on is something that works incredibly well together. There's a lot of finely tuned cogs that are all working to create one big beautiful machine. And, uh, and I think the, the guys at Elementary can be very proud of what they've achieved. And at the same time, I'm interested to see what their ambitions are for the future of this project. As, uh, as I guess if we were to come to two or three years down the track from this release and everything was still looking and functioning basically the same, I feel like that would be a little bit of a disappointment. But for where we are right now, this is a solid improvement on Loki and it introduces a bunch of spit and polish um, unlike we've seen on many, many Linux distributions. And if there were ever a case study to point to as a great reason for having a release based schedule instead of a rolling release, then elementary would be a great example of that. So just before we wrap up here, a quick word from this week's sponsor. This week's video was made possible by NordVPN. NordVPN is one of the leading VPNs on the internet with over 5,100 servers in 62 countries. They have really easy setup and browser extensions for pretty much every platform out there. And not only do they offer unlimited bandwidth, they also have a strict no logs policy. So you can be assured that your internet traffic is completely anonymous and secure. Now you can not only pay with pretty much any payment platform out there, including credit card, PayPal or Bitcoin, but they do have a 30 day money back guarantee. And for infinitely galactic viewers, I have a very special offer for you 66% off a two year plan for this leading VPN provider. It's basically one fancy latte per month. So be sure to check out the special link in the first line of the description below or go to www.nordvpn.org slash infinitely galactic or use code infinitely galactic at checkout to receive this offer. Not only will you get yourself a fantastic VPN deal, but it also helps out the channel by knowing that I sent you there. Once again, special thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's episode. Let me know what you think about elementary in the comments below. Of course, if you think some of these apps or different concepts that are presented in elementary deserve a deeper dive, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.